Napa's Glass Beach, which is the, at the end of Eucalyptus Drive. I've been here before, and I'd uh, like to show you the difference in the tide for one day. So this is a negative tide, approximately seven feet, I'm sorry, 0.7 foot below sea level. And it came from a very high tide. I'll show you the water line. So here is where the water was earlier today with the various reeds. You'll notice all the glasses here, all the particles, but we're going to be able to go way down to the shoreline today and look at some of this debris and there, once again, I've shown this in the past, but there's everything here. So there are bricks and there's various types of stone. You can see the water is receding. So we're going to go down, there's uh, metal pottery, older bottles, older glass, black sand, so down here at the water's edge, old pilings, timbers, some sort of ceramic. So this area is said to be a dump, it's a waste site, and they are saying that there was open pit burning happening up here and there's a lot of evidence of extreme damage to the, to the material that's here. You can see the condition of it. Continual bricks, older tiles, pottery, more bricks, different styles of bricks, brick and mortar, melted material, antique glass, ceramic, dishes, there's metal and equipment here as well. So up at the embankment, where I rode over in here, so I want to get a good look at everything. So I'm just kind of an introduction to the area. I'm going to walk around and show some of the things that are obvious. You can see the vitrified effect where a, a mass had fused. More bricks. Tile installed over a mortar bed. And of course, down at the uh, southernmost tip of this area is the United States ship Cory, abandoned with this extreme damage 300 foot, 314 foot long battleship. So we're walking in, and then a tandem bike riding in. Just decided to park the bike here, and this is what I started with, is this collage of bricks, and probably melted, and very melted. Evidence of heat, and Components merging with others. There's uh, no shortage of this type of evidence down here of an extreme heat event that involved metal. So I've got my, you can hear my detector. So we're looking for metal. Metal. There's old equipment. Gear casing, steel. This is very, okay, this is completely fused. But this is an example of what exists um, everywhere down here along the shore. So, this shoreline 
is said to have been extensive dumping grounds, but it appears to be something much different. I want to show you a little more down here. We're going to go down towards the water's edge and look at really what's here. There's bricks everywhere. Most of the items that have the green algae, which is covered uh, with seawater periodically, seems to be brick. This might have a stamp. A stamp brick. So very algae covered. The algae does not want the tile or the ceramic or the glass. But the brick, yes. So this has a so this has a, a visible frog and stamp. And this right next to it is a vitrified surface that is actually glass. So if we're on Napa's glass beach, extreme windy conditions. <coughs> I'm using my best microphone. So all of this area which is extensive, the marshlands, the wetlands of South Napa. I'll provide a link so you can examine that on the maps. But all of the levees are at an established uh, height above sea level, never inundated, no washovers, very predictable. Today is uh, an example of the highest and lowest at the same day. So the water line today well up above here but here's more of this uh, slaggy steel and old equipment there's a tremendous amount of berms I have noted in the past that ice plant does take on this red hue in the presence of iron so with the metal detector there would be uh, hits over here but on the, on the ice plant that is exclusively green, no hits. So we come down over this metal. So this would be a conglomerate, an agglomerate, something made of metal, 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 but then fused in the middle of it is a brick and glass and equipment. More equipment. So the entire coast, the entire shoreline of all of Napa County's um, levees is made up of debris, demolition from previous inhabitants. And it goes all the way out and beyond into the water. But it does form the uh, constructed makeup of the entire levee system, which is likely hundreds of miles in this one area only. And then towards the south. So it's Mare Island and Vallejo. And we get into the Sassoon marshes, which may be more extensive. Okay, examining this large piece, which I'm finding has metal and aggregate, insulated material, more metal, very obviously encrusted surface, and you can see the vitrified glass and the shine here. So it only, ha it only happened in the high heat condition. So let's get down to the water's edge and pick apart some of what's sitting here. This is only visible a few days of the year, really. Most of the time, I'd be several feet underwater. It's very soft and marshy out here, so here's a lot of tile and glass. On a clear day from this location, you can see the city skyline. Not today. We find the bricks with the holes. This is glass. Spark plug. Uh, 
a basin of somebody's sink. So there seems to be a craggier appearance to the material here at this level. It has this very bunched up taffy like appearance of many things coming together up to the water line. So this entire, it looks like a debris field. But they would say this is just where they dumped garbage and it was uh, burning continuously. I don't know how the public would tolerate that, and I haven't seen any pictures of the columns of the smoke or anyone doing anything that kind of thing in this area. But I want to keep looking at what's here. So at the water's edge, at the uh, limit line of current tidal activity. So at this edge, it seems to be where the erosion of the tide is showing the edge of the flow. So by flow, Whatever came from around this area and came down and over the top and considerably far into the water, we're walking on the compacted material until where the water laps continually. And we're going to look, at, look and see what's actually coming out of here. molten steel, glass, pottery, underneath a layer of soil, unusual tile, a brick that is fused with metal, ceramic tile, concrete, fused metal and strange components. Metal is made up of a large amount here some sort of little piece of steel and then more metal at the water's edge and a compacted molten fused boundary. There seems to anything you can imagine that's related to construction of all eras seems to be down here and then it breaks away and it gets tumbled and washed. And you can really see, you can see how that works. It's kind of like a sluice, sluice action. So as the water comes up, it leaves behind all these fines. These fines, let's see if we find anything. Sharp, looks like recent glass, not subjected to the tumbling. And then there's the frosted, this is from all the churning and washing. I'm going to look at some more. So look how destroyed this is. Bricks and mortar, everything is here. This clearly looks like an electrical insulator. It may have been on some sort of a uh, power pole or transformer. So it's, a, it's an absolute debris field and it's very soft. This anywhere where you choose to dig would very likely find strange things. Spark plugs. Melted glass, tile, very old grid. So it looks like the water's coming back up now. The tide has turned. Distinct line. This side was obviously hot. You can see the fused elements. Truck tire.
completely down here. More. More brick. So all of the shoreline from this location all the way up into the town of Napa along the Napa River has debris. As do the col the culverts are full of debris and bricks, constructed elements. lost some of its weight. I have no idea what this is. It's uh, it's concrete with embedded items of all shape and size. Metal. More metal. Melted into the aggregate and glass. It's hard to know what could be here from when. It's part of a tile floor. There's a mortar bed underneath, full of sea life. Just walking along the shore, finding strange objects, very large piece of steel, huge piece, a lot of thud, it's the liquefaction would be a very strong thing here. This is all soft, just barely held together, and if you stand in one place and stomp, you'll sink. But, uh, so I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to decide what this is. Maybe you've already decided to, or you know. This is the wreckage uh, of the recent cataclysm in the beaches of South Napa. Everything is built from household items and homes and infrastructure. Interesting to dig down 10, 20 more feet. Of course, it would be flooded. There are bones. There are bones under here. place to choose to dump everything and then burn it. Burn everything along the entire coast all the way down to the very, very burnt battleship. All of this is burnt. And I want to show you in a future video that on the other side of that battleship, if anyone would like to look at the maps, there's a 1,000 by 1,000 square submerged foundation structure it's in it. It's uh, difficult access. Canoe in, kayak in only, which might happen. But anyone, if you're looking, have a peek at that, and use the terrain filters for this area. This is this is wreckage. It's easier places to dump this. Plus, it goes out as far. But if I have my boots on, I, it's uh, it goes out. This is the very lowest of the tides, so moving any equipment through this water would be completely insane. I wanted to show the operations of some heavy equipment nearby, and what type of equipment is truly involved to move large quantities of earth and to excavate for foundation and infrastructure. It's a 
something similar to this would need to be accomplished before any of the large structures we've been looking at could be built or have any chance of surviving. So this is looking into Solano County. And you start to notice that the shape of the land is very flat in certain areas where terraforming and earthworks have been accomplished. So these berm tops. So I'm behind a berm protected from the wind. The whole area has tidal ponds that are controlled by a very complicated system of canals. So the water can be brought in or released or avoided during the tidal sequences. So coming up from behind the berm, I just wanted to show that it's extremely windy. So I'm going to put the wind on my back and just show you the area.